Hello everyone! So for today's video, as you can tell, I'm going to be doing a little draw with me. It's been a while since I've made one, almost a year actually, but uh, yeah, here I'm showing you my supplies and my pencil cases. Surprisingly, all three of my pencil cases are from Kinokuniya, which is the Japanese bookstore. So yeah, all three of them from that bookstore. And yeah, these are the drawing supplies that I'm going to be using for my sketchbook today. These are pretty much all of the ones that I use in this sketchbook anyway. I try to use only dry media and then these are my favorite pens that I like to sketch with. So yeah, let's get into the drawing and I have some questions to answer to stimulate your, your ears while I stimulate your eyes with the draw with me. So the first question is actually from Foxville Art or Anusha. She has really great videos here on YouTube and really great art on Instagram. But uh, yeah, she asks, do you have a dream client you want to work with? So I have never thought about this because I've never been offered work to do. I've only ever been offered like logo stuff, but I always say that I'm not really specialized in that because I'm not a graphic designer, so they would be better off seeking that elsewhere because I really don't know how to create logos. I, I'm not sure. I really haven't thought about a dream client. I do want to illustrate books sometime, even though I know that that is a lot of work and I don't even know if I'm qualified to do that, but I would really like to illustrate books. So the next two questions are actually basically the same question. So small art or Mel here on YouTube and on Instagram, she also has really great art. She asks, what is your biggest artist pet peeve? And then another person asks, what is your biggest pet peeve? So biggest artist pet peeve maybe is, I guess people asking if they can recreate my physical art design. So like for example, a clay pin, they'll ask me if they can uh, replicate the clay pin or the like a rug or something. They'll ask me if they can copy it, which no, you cannot. But I guess it's one of my biggest artist pet peeves. And my biggest pet peeve in general is probably people who have no respect for like my time or my emotions or whatever because I know that I try really hard to be considerate of people and their time, their emotions, their business, whatever. So I guess it's a pet peeve of mine when people don't do the same for me. Next question is, what is your favorite thing to draw ever? Uh, my favorite thing to draw ever is probably flowers and that's probably not a surprise to you guys, but I feel like I can be so loose when I'm drawing flowers and there's so many different ways to draw them. I can draw them more simplified and cute and I can draw them more realistically as well. Next question is how did you find your art style? So I feel like right now I don't even have an art style. Sometimes whenever I feel like I've finally settled into an art style, it changes again. So I really don't feel like I have one personally, but I think what helps the most is drawing as much as you can and not even drawing with the purpose to make a finished piece or to come out with something perfect, but just to, for the sake of drawing and for the sake of practicing, I feel like that's how, whoopsies, just got a message. Anyways, I feel like drawing just for the sake of drawing is how you really start to see your art style come out. So I got, a, I got this question a lot and I got a lot of different iterations of this question a lot as well. And it's, when did you think about becoming a full-time artist? I also got like, when did you think about opening your business or like when did you start taking yourself seriously as an artist? So I have been in love with art since I was very young. Um, art class was always my favorite in elementary school. But as I got into middle school and high school, I felt like I had to let that go and pursue things that were more realistic and more money lucrative. So yeah, that part of me kind of got put on the back burner. I still enjoyed drawing sometimes, but it really wasn't my focus and I was exploring different ideas of what I would become in this uh, capitalistic society and how I would join the workforce. I would say I started taking myself seriously when I got into college, so I started college as a fashion major, but I had to take some studio classes to finish my fashion degree, and I ended up falling in love with those studio classes, and I just loved everything about them and I was actually fairly good at them because of my art background so I ended up switching my major to uh, studio art so I guess that's when I started taking myself more seriously and then I really started taking it seriously with my business and such 
in the year 2020. So I opened my business in December 2019 and it was just whatever. It was a very uh, startup, small business. I think I made like 30 orders over the span of like six months. So it really was not um, anything big, but I went through a really hard breakup in March 2020, actually right before we went into lockdown when the pandemic really started taking off. Um, went through a really hard breakup after a super toxic relationship and uh, I had all this time on my hands from the pandemic and I was rediscovering myself. I was rediscovering my identity, finding the things that I liked again because I really had become a shell of a person after that relationship. So I turned to my business, this very small sticker making business that I had and I started to work on it. So another question is, how is your relationship going? Now I'm in a different, very healthy relationship and it's going very well, thank you. Another question is, do you think you'd be living such an aesthetic life if it weren't for YouTube? So I assume this means like as far as caring about how I look and my surroundings and such and I don't I feel like I would to a certain degree because I've always enjoyed dressing up and getting ready for myself and having a nice space but I definitely don't think it would be as much because I do a lot of times feel pressure from YouTube to kind of meet that standard and live that out in my videos. So next question we have is how do you deal with staying confident with your artwork and not letting it define your worth as an artist? So I still struggle with this really bad. Um, in fact, right now I'm kind of in a confidence slump when it comes to my art, but I would say kind of like pushing through it in a sense. So you have to like, learn about yourself and your mind and such so i know when to push through things that i feel and i know when to uh give myself rests and you know give myself breaks and stuff so depending on what you're feeling but i always at least try to push through it because a lot of times it's just negative thoughts and they are just that negative thoughts i don't need to give them the energy or the time it is very difficult it's definitely much easier said than done but that is kind of how I push through those times. Someone asked me, are you going to be an artist for the rest of your life? And uh, yes, I will be an artist for the rest of my life. Will it always be my main source of income? I'm not sure. Uh, right now it is and I thoroughly enjoy it, but maybe once I get my bachelor's degree, I'll focus on something else. I definitely don't have to always have art as my main source of income. It might actually help to, for it to not me. If I get a different job that isn't art focused so I can, you know, pour all my creativity and passions into my art and not feel like it's tied to my income. But yes, I will always be an artist for the rest of my life. Next question is, do you have any singers or music that inspire your drawing? And yes, I do. I actually get very inspired by a lot of cover art for songs that I find, so I will put some of that on the screen. I can't remember the names off the top of my head, but I will put the cover art on the screen with the names of the songs and the artists. Next question is, what do you do when you're not inspired? So uh, luckily there's actually a lot of stuff that you can do when you're not inspired. So first thing is reflect on why you're not inspired. So sometimes you may feel burned out or feel like you've been creating a lot. So if that's the case, I will take like a one or two day break completely from art. I will not look on my Instagram at art. I will not go on Pinterest. I will not watch art videos on YouTube. I will not create any art. I will spend time with myself on my other hobbies, spend time with my boyfriend, my friends, you know, whoever to kind of just completely get that off my mind. And that tends to give me a jump start. Uh, when I'm not feeling inspired but if it's not because of burnout I sometimes will ask you guys on Instagram to give me doodle ideas and we'll kind of have like a doodling session on my Instagram stories and that'll help me I will also look for new sources of inspiration on Instagram or Pinterest next question is what are your favorite hobbies apart from art so art is pretty much my life so it's my main hobby but I do play piano I unfortunately have not had the time to practice in a while, but I, yes, I do play piano. Um, I guess the rug making and all, and all the embroidery and such could be considered art, but it's not as mentally draining, I guess. 
at least for myself. And I am a big collector as well. You guys know that I collect Squishmallows. I also like to collect little figurines and like blind box figurines and such. Next question is, if you couldn't draw with an iPad, what would you use? So if I couldn't draw with an iPad, if I wanted to get that kind of digital look, I would probably use pen and Copic markers. But uh, my go-to as far as traditional art is definitely just like sketchbooking with ink, colored pencil, and markers because I can be loose with it. So yeah, that's how I have the most fun. Next question is any advice slash tips on moving out of your parents' house? Also, I love your art. Thank you. That means a lot. So I probably have not announced this on YouTube, but I did recently sign a lease for an apartment. This will be my first time moving out, living on my own. So I guess my first tip is if you can, try to save as much as you can because you always want to have a savings account or emergency savings for if something happens. So if you were to get in a car accident, if you were to get really sick and needed to pay medical bills, I don't have health insurance. So that is my main concern right now to have an emergency fund for medical bills. So that's like the main thing. And the next thing is obviously trying to get a stable income. So finding a job, which I know is very difficult, uh, in today's climate with how little they pay for minimum wages and such but trying to find a job that will give you a stable enough income to make three times your apartment rent so i th at least in texas um and i know in major cities and most states apartment places will ask you to make three times your rent so that is something that you want to look at and also like writing down and kind of playing house and playing out what your expenses would be when you move out so thinking like okay you can go on your local grocery store's website so for example we have a lot of hebs in texas so i might you know go to the heb website and kind of put together a shopping cart of what my typical groceries might look like so that i can see how much they would cost and maybe see where i could lower my cost and get some savings um, you also want to look up the average utility bills for your state or your city. Start looking at apartment prices, rents for, you know, whatever size you're looking for. So yeah, just kind of playing house and seeing how much things would cost. Next question is, how did you come up with your username? Why Paloma the Peach? So I get this question a lot actually. And well, my name is Paloma. Uh, it means dove or it could be also pigeon uh, in Spanish but so that's my real name and then there was an like kind of like an ongoing joke between my friends and i when i was much younger i think i was 17 and 18 because i liked the little like peach aesthetic where it was and i i guess people look tend to think that i look like a peach um so it was like i had my name not username as pull mother peach for just like a little bit and i thought it had a nice ring to it so i made it my art instagram username so next question is how do i motivate myself to draw i can't find the energy to draw anything even if i want to so i used to struggle with this a lot and i think these struggles may be rooted in things that are bigger than just not having the energy to draw so i would say first thing is maybe reflect on other aspects of your life and you know, if you're going through a hard time, it might be because of that, you know, difficult times in life tend to drain our energy, especially our mental energy, which is what you need to draw. So if you are going through a hard time, you need to be kind to yourself. And if you find yourself getting frustrated because you want to draw, but you don't have the energy, again, be kind to yourself. I've really had to learn that in the year 2021 so far. A lot of us really are truly mean to ourselves and we don't even realize it so i i would start there just being kind to yourself and being like you know what it's okay that i don't have the energy to do this and reflect on why and starting off small you know like even just once a day drawing something that you find is really easy to draw so like strawberries right now i'm drawing strawberries so if strawberries are really easy for you to draw you might get out a piece of paper and just draw three strawberries that day and be like, okay, I drew today. So I think that could be a start. Next question is, what do you avoid to draw the most? I avoid drawing 
Well, not as much anymore, but I avoid drawing bodies the most. I'm not very good at full body pieces of people. And I'm also not very good at like three quarter perspective faces in my style either. So that's probably what I avoid drawing the most. Next question is what food do you refuse to eat? So I do not eat any seafood. The only seafood that I will eat is if it is tuna in like tuna salad or uh, cooked sushi rolls. And that's because they have like a lot of other ingredients and you can't taste the seafood as much. But yeah, I, I don't really eat seafood. And I also barely eat beef. The only time that I will eat beef is if it's in tacos because I'm Mexican, as you guys probably know, and I'm a Mexican immigrant and Mexican cuisine is basically all we eat in my house. So yeah. When was the last time that you were proud of yourself? I really liked this question because I hadn't thought about it, but I actually try to be proud of myself pretty often because, uh, like I said, I have really had to learn to be kind to myself this year. And um, I have a extremely bad habit of being very mean to myself, being very hard on myself to the point that it gives me panic attacks. It makes me feel physically sick. So, yeah, I've really had to learn to be kind to myself, so I, I'm actually proud of myself pretty often now, so whenever I can get through an anxious episode or a panic attack, I'm always super proud of myself. Whenever I get something done off my to-do list, off my to-do list, I'm proud of myself, but I guess like major event was probably signing my lease because it was something that I didn't know when I would be able to do just because of how difficult uh, it is nowadays and just because of my situation that I hope one day I can share with you guys once I uh, get past it and fix it, but yeah. Next question is what do you think are the most important things about running a store? So most important things for me I think is quality so obviously i'm not going to be able to always make 100 percent perfect products because i am a small store a small business but i do try my absolute hardest to have the quality made to the best of my ability i think that's very important another thing that's very important that you might not expect is shipping it's really complicated to figure out but it is super important to figure out the pricing and everything Next question is, were you ever scared to show your art? I was too shy when I was young. Yes, uh, I started posting on my art Instagram, I think maybe like November, October of 2019. Those posts are archived now, but that's when I started posting and it was constantly me posting and immediately deleting it. I didn't start leaving posts up until like January of 2020. I was super embarrassed, I was super shy, but I felt like I had to start somewhere because I wanted people to see what I made and I wanted to improve and I wanted to be part of the art community. So yes, I was very terrified and even now sometimes I get really scared because uh, I feel like a lot of us hold our art very close to our hearts and it feels very vulnerable to share that part of yourself. Next question is, how do you do self-care as a full-time artist? So this is a very good question because I, uh, it's actually pretty difficult because, because I obviously I'm very grateful, so grateful to be able to uh, do what I love to make money, but because you do that, uh, you tend to overlook self-care and like time for yourself because it feels like work feels like self-care until you get completely burnt out and you're like, I don't know what's wrong with me. So that is something that I am working on right now. But for me, it's been just doing nothing because I have a really bad habit of constantly needing to work or constantly needing to do something. So even when I'm like watching Netflix or watching a video, I'll start like... Uh, coming up with ideas and drawing and all this stuff and so I will force myself to sit down and watch episodes of a show and really do nothing just like let my brain rest um, and also spending time with people like going out well obviously we're in a pandemic so you can't go out that much but doing what you can to spend time with people because when you're with someone you want to give them attention and you want to have quality time with them so when you're doing that you don't really have the option to be making art and drawing and stuff like that. So that's something else uh, that really helps me 
do some self-care. Okay, so next question is what inspires you the most for your style and subject matter? So as far as my style, I think the only thing that I try to keep is a more sketchy slash like sloppy feel, I guess you could say. I like it to look like a child could draw it. So that's really the only thing that I try to keep with my style. But for subject matter, I am attracted to very ornate objects like teacups, teapots, daggers, mirrors, stuff like that. And I also really like drawing food as well. When is it the right time to do a Patreon for an artist like you or maybe smaller? So I think it's the right time to start a Patreon when you've developed a good audience that really enjoys your art. Um, that doesn't necessarily have to mean that you have to have like a lot of followers and stuff, but if you've noticed that there's a lot of people that enjoy your art and a lot of people asking for more, I think that's a great time to start a Patreon. Next question is what is your favorite art era? So my favorite art era is probably post-impressionism and I also really enjoy Baroque. And last question that I'm going to do is your honest advice to someone who started drawing at 25. Uh, my honest advice is practice as much as you can. I don't think it matters that you started at 25. You could start drawing at any age. I think expressing ourselves creatively is really what keeps us going as humans. Uh, so practice as much as you can if your goal is to get better at art, better at drawing. But if not, you know, just as long as you're having fun, draw whatever you want. As long as, you know, it's not hurting others and enjoy yourself and practice, practice, practice if you want to get better. Okay, so that was my last question of the video and you can see I'm just finishing up drawing this sketchbook spread. I hope you guys enjoyed this draw with me and I will see you guys in next week's vlog. Bye!